I'm having so much fun. I'm sweating right now. Go ahead, JB. Leave him alone. <laughs> I've tried to record this intro now like three times of this part of the vlog, girl. It's Friday. It's Friday. And I'm ready to jam. Is it ready to jam or ready to swing? Girl, I don't remember. I'm hungover. We had such a good time last night. I was so excited to get these dang on drinks that I forgot to film it. We went to one of our favorite restaurants or our date night restaurant and we ordered to go, right? So we got five margaritas. Child, I only had two and a half and my husband had three and I was two and a half too. Um, excuse me y'all. And I got a burger. The fries were whack, but I think what it is is that they're, they switched to frozen fries because they normally do fresh french fries, but I, I guess they figured uh, we ain't ordering no potatoes in this pandemic. So that was okay, because I made my own potatoes here. I just trashed those. And my husband got guacamole, we got smoked wings. We ordered too much food, but we didn't know what it would be like, because this is the first time this particular restaurant is doing to go. But I know one thing, they were a little bit disorganized. So hopefully they'll get it together, but those drinks were well worth it. Y'all, we drove. How, how far was it? We drove 20 minutes to get it. I don't know, if to me that's okay, but it's in another city. It's up in Scottsdale, North Scottsdale actually. So oh, it was so good. Mm. And the drinks were very affordable, $6 for the margaritas. So we had a little dance party last night where y'all saw um, me and JB, my husband was dancing on the couch. He's so dang on lazy. But look, at one point we lost the remote control, girl. We I have an attitude about my son's curriculum. They're doing history and they started off with, I mean, we're not gonna talk about this a lot because I have an attitude problem. They started off with talking about the thir the foundations of the 13 cal colonies. Oh Lord, I can't speak. Um, so basically this year, in the middle of the core knowledge, they were discussing um, the formation of this country. A real quick meatless lunch for us just added some spinach for my husband for his dinner tonight at work um yeah this stuff y'all costs less than 10 bucks and honestly we could stretch it even more i'm going through everything i have in my pantry no need to go to the grocery store for another week or so hey y'all i just got let my hair let me close this door i got about five minutes let my hair kind of soak up in this Thing of a jiggy. I want to show y'all my hair completely naked. I sometimes, of course, when I do product reviews, you see what my hair looks like with me with no product, but it is drying up pretty fast. Um, and this is what it looks like. This is what four type looks like with no products or anything. I mean, my hair is very soft because I conditioned the hell out of it, but this is what it looks like. You know, when I first put natural like a lot of people i wasn't sure what to really do i'll be talking while i'm doing my hair i wasn't sure what to really do as it got longer um and one thing that i did notice with some women who first go natural i didn't get all this product out my hair y'all this is not good but hey yeah you see this i still see conditioner um there are some not all because there's so much information now on youtube that you really should have a regimen down but there are a couple of women who are like my hair just mats up all the time and i can literally look at it this is i remember one time i was walking in walmart and there was a girl who was like you have such pretty hair and at the time i was wearing a twist out she's like how do you get your hair like that i said well i twist up my hair hold on y'all i need to get this part together 
And she was like, well, my hair would not look like that. I said, actually, we have very similar textures. And she kind of looked at me like she didn't believe me. The problem was is that I could tell by looking at her hair, I could tell. Uh-oh. I don't know why she didn't know this, but hey, hold on, y'all. All right, it's a little better. I could tell by looking at her hair that she literally put some product in her hair and left it like this loose. We cannot do that at four tight. There is no way. I have to section off my hair now before it completely dries, add product and leave it sectioned off. She literally had no clue that this type of hair, you really can't be wearing it loose like this. There's just no way. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my leave-in conditioner um, I'm using the As I Am Lux line. Y'all know I've seen, I've done this pretty, plenty of times. But yeah, so oftentimes people assume that, you know, I have a different, you know, I'm not four type. This is four type. Not necessarily that I'm not four type, but I have quote unquote good hair. And I'm like, mm, it's not necessarily that. I've taken good care of my hair and I know how to properly moisturize, wash, and I have a regimen down. Um, but I just thought about that when I was putting my hair away. How that one girl hair was literally tangled. And I don't have a lot of time now. But normally, yeah, see I separate like this. And... Um, and I further split my hair like that. I further split it like that. And then I add more. More leave-in. Oh, my hair will be so dry. Like, are you serious? And then I will go in again and detangle some more. Now, I don't have a lot of time, um, and I'm going to go in with some oil at the root and on the side, y'all. My edges, I need to be very careful. I was talking to um, a couple of, well, Busby, really, and tell her how I think my edges are kind of thinning. So, I need to be very careful with my hairstyles and Jamaican black castor oil is what I'm going to be, you see this right here? I know some of y'all like, what? No, seriously, like, it's not supposed to be that like that. Like, I had hair right here at one point. Um, I have a lot of hair so I can hide it, but I need to get it together. What I'm trying to say is that I'm noticing that my edges are thinning up a bit. So, I'm not going to be really tight here at the root, make it loose. And I know oftentimes you guys hear me say, I don't like wearing my hair in my face. Well, I'm going to have to stop pulling it up so much. I do a lot of pull up, up dudes, uh, styles. Um, girls speak English. I wear a lot of styles where the front of my hair is pulled up out of my face. I'm going to have to start letting it hang down a little bit more. Because see, I don't know. I can tell a difference. It's not a big difference, but I can tell that I need to be a little bit more mindful of my edges. All right, y'all. Right in here. Look for the eggs. <laughs> you find an egg? Yeah. Yeah. Did you find another egg? No. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and praise the Lord. Y'all, you know who say that? Uh, she's a YouTuber called I Am Because of You. I love her. She, uh, her and her husband wrote a book a couple of years ago. It is a great testimony of a book. Um, but today is Resurrection Sunday. We are so blessed to be able to <clears throat> alive and living, even if it's trying in times. I'm going to read for you guys a, um, it's from a devotion it's a prayer, but I think it relates to today and what's going on today. The prayer is, is a part of devotion about um, dealing with... We're celebrating Easter at home. Yes, we are. 
Um, we're still embracing um, the fact that Christ has risen for us. But I'm going to let you go outside and pick him up in a minute, baby. So let me read this for you guys because I think that somebody um, needs to hear this message. And again, this is the devotion that I've been reading um, dealing with anger and parenting. Yes, girl, I, I'm transparent about that. But I've been reading this prayer off and on for weeks now because um, it really does highlight a lot of what's going on today and, and the devotion starts off with when you feel like when your life feels out of control and I know a lot of us feel that way right now so let me get into this let me scroll all the way down um, I'm just gonna read the first half okay father you are the same yesterday today and forever I know that this time of transition is not a surprise to you and that you have allowed me to face these changes. You are with me in the midst of uncertainty. I know that in this chapter of my life where everything seems unsettled, that you remain steady. I need your help to feel secure and at peace in my circumstances simply because I am your child and you are my loving father. I don't want to be irritable or complain, nor do I want to let my mouth rule my emotions. Um, excuse me. I don't want to be irritable or complain, nor do I want to let my emotions rule my heart and mouth, same thing. Give me more of your Holy Spirit in my life and help me to be unflattable, resilient, and victorious. This is the thing, I'm gonna pause there. We want to go, we want this thing to be over with real fast. A lot of us want to. What if it's our purpose to go through this so that we can be victorious at the end, okay? Thank you for being my rock and my firm foundation. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. If you received that, girls, say amen. Amen, y'all. So, JB and I took communion this morning. We are good. We're going to be doing a little Easter egg. Wash your hands, baby. Um, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do something. I'm really tired, you guys. Okay, baby, that's enough. I'm really tired. My husband and I were up until 2 o'clock this morning coughing. It's dusty. It's but dusty. I can We're gonna pray about that. I need to clean the house really, really good. I haven't been able. We've been so busy. We've been so busy. It just hasn't been a priority. I shouldn't say we, you know. So anyway, I'm going to. The house is clean, but it needs to be dusted. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all yeah, still saw him. I'm gonna have to take that out, baby. You so silly. So, I am making Easter meal for two. Yeah, and we're gonna make coconut cake. Gonna make coconut cake. And, and did you buy a number two candle? I didn't, baby, but I think I could find some candles around the house, I think. Okay. Well, I'm making smothered wings, um, dressing, that coconut cake like JB said. For sides, of course, dressing, um, corn and baby carrots. I couldn't find any collard greens. I couldn't find what I wanted. So I have baby carrots in there. I have corn in there. I have ingredients to make dressing. Um, of course, there's no fresh cranberries. So I'm just doing what I can. Look, this is this is a time where we can't be picky, okay? I'm, I'm making a most of what we have and that's the attitude you have to have at this point. So I got my new spring glasses on because um, when, when I got a little lit the other night, I, I sat on my glasses and I broke my glasses. I didn't break them, but they twisted, and so now, yeah. I'm gonna buy some new glasses you, next you, month. And you big butt sat on your dang glasses and they broke? That's what I'm talking about. That butt is big. All right, you know, you want a spanking this morning? You want a, <laughs> you want an Easter whooping? All right. You already see one? <laughs> I don't know how many there are, but you still got one more out here. That's it. That's all the egg. Yep, eight eggs. Oh, there is a sparkle in there, and I'm not touching it. I'm gonna take. Mm-hmm. The chocolate's melted. It is? 
Already? I'm sorry, baby. Let me <coughs> sit down here and talk to y'all real quick. Give y'all this, um, and then let's kind of do something. This is what they look like up close. Y'all, y'all have to excuse me. We, we trying to get it together. A lot has changed. Excuse the background, y'all. Hold on. Um, a lot has changed. But first, let me show you guys the face mask that I ordered from Soak, Soak House. So cow, I'll put the link below. Now again, these are not 100% effective um, against the virus and my husband is stressing to me. Again, my husband is a lead MT, um, medical technologist anyway. So again, he's stressing to me, look, the N95s are for people who are for medical staff because most your everyday average person is going to cross contaminate these masks. So he showed me how to wear them because everybody has their own little, so that we ain't using everyone else's mask. I put everyone's cloth and their N95 mask in their own Ziploc bag. Um, and so, yeah, so let me, and we'll get into him, my husband. He's like, you need to be wearing gloves and a mask when you go out, like, I'm like, don't, don't, what is the problem? He's like, you need to be wearing gloves and masks. And so I, we went back and forth. I'm like, but it's cross contamination with the gloves. So he's, you know, he's stressing, don't touch your face. He's like, do not touch your face and wash your hands. That is it. Don't touch anything in the store. Meaning don't, don't touch my, don't go in my purse. Don't touch my cell phone. Don't touch my face. And as soon as I'm done with the gloves, take them off put them in a bag in my car, use more antibacterial soap. When I get home, wash my hands. When I'm done putting up all the groceries, wash my hands. Um, actually, we're not even doing that. I did home delivery. I'm gonna get to the mask, y'all, I'm sorry. I did home delivery for the first time this morning, excuse me, pick up for the first time this morning. And he's like, when you get your stuff, disinfect everything um, and then put it up and wash your hands. So this is the mask I got from SoCal. It is 100% cloth. This has a little, this is a pouch for a filter, okay? Now, because I am crazy and OCD, when I got them immediately, I soaked them in hot water and just a little bit of bleach because it's, it's cotton. And I air, I dried it on heat in the, in the dryer and then I air dry them. So anyway, enough of that, you guys. Um, The biggest change that has happened in our life, in our home life, is I was talking to my husband yesterday and I said, look, I'm on the list. I'm getting um, emails and notifications about us getting into this other school for JB. Should we proceed with going to this other school? He's like, no, they're vaccinating. The vaccine won't be ready for a while. He's like, no, you, he said, I'm not even worried about the child. I'm worried about you, meaning me, because I have a, a weak immune system, so so I'm like, okay. <laughs> so we just we have agreed to homeschool JB, and so we are excited. I'm nervous. I'm a little jittery, but y'all, I already had. Even I've talked about this before. I've already had things planned on the side just in case. I already started taking notes, and so yeah, his. his main concern is JB interacting with other children. I said, you know, I'm pretty sure there are, there are going to be a lot of kids that are um, homeschooling. JB is FaceTiming with a child every two days. He's FaceTime. I mean, yes, there's nothing like physical interaction with other children, but he's FaceTiming with my nieces and nephews. He FaceTimes with his friends. They play games. So he's interacting with other children weekly, multiple times a week. Um, and I think as we, as the curve lowers for this virus that I will have him to interact with like, like our neighbor kids, our child children, and, um, Hopefully, you know, but we don't want to get this false sense of safety, you guys, because 
China is now seeing a resurgence of cases because they were like, they sent their kids to school. Like last month, they started opening the schools. The baby, I saw videos and pictures of the children going to school with face masks. So anyway, with all that being said, we have agreed that homeschooling until we feel comfortable with sending our child to school is the best decision for our family at this moment. We're gonna finish off this quarter with the school. I will be notifying his teacher today. I will actually see her in person today. We're gonna go by the school um, to pick up some resources. And so I will let her know in person. Um, and then you always have to look at the state laws and what's required. And the only thing we have to do in Arizona is notify the state within 30 days of deciding to homeschool. Um, we will be doing what's called unschooling for the first few. We're going to continue with the quarter, this quarter at his charter school. We're going to be doing what's called unschooling over the summer. I'm not going to push it. Basically, unschooling unschool is student driven. Whatever he wants to learn, um, he, we will be doing reading, writing, and some math daily but again that would be driven by him i will lay out not a lot because too much will overwhelm them especially my child i will lay, lay out several little books around and then he could determine what he wants to learn um because yesterday was funny yesterday we spent quite a bit of time on history things we are reading a book based out of kenya and she uh, some of the vocabulary words was like i believe baron was one earnings seedling excuse the light y'all seedling and um village and this teacher said most of africa um they have villages as opposed to cities that we have here i paused it right then because i didn't have a, i didn't have a time i didn't have a chance this time to look at the curriculum before I introduced it to him. So I apologized, I said, this is not true. And so I pulled up South Africa, I pulled up Ghana, I pulled up Ethi places in Ethiopia, Addis Ababa. I pulled up major cities in Africa and showed my child different countries in Africa. I said, these are the cities. They, yeah, there's absolutely, there are villages there. Hell, there, there are villages in South America. So, yeah. Let me calm down. So let me let, let me inform you guys of, of what we are doing and I'm still deciding. Look, I'm gonna take this entire summer to decide on the curriculum. I know for sure it would not be an everyday. Most people who homeschool, unless they have multiple kids, it is not everyday. Um, for us, I want to ideally do four days out of the week, minimum three hours. Definitely reading, writing, and um, math on on those days. And so I have a couple of notes here, and I will be putting as much information as possible. And I think the biggest, besides interacting with other people, socialization, in other words, I think a lot of parents think they don't have patience. Well, we're gonna be praying about that. <laughs> that was my that's one of my big hangups too is having patience, but having to do this at home now. Um, I'm developing patience and I'm praying about it every day. I'm thanking God and I'm praying for it and I'm praying that he will help us through this, through this transition. Um, so uh, choosing a curriculum is so overwhelming. When I tell you, I mean, for those who don't know, there are public schools that are online public. Um, I think one of them is, uh, at least here in Arizona, Arizona Connections, Academy Connections. I reached out to them for a while to see what they had available. I think it's, it would be too overwhelming for my child. If I have well over $200 of books sitting in my Amazon cart. So I'm kind of leaning towards the A Time for Learning um, because that is a platform that JB is used to. And I told him if it if he if he's not feeling that, then we will switch to um the good and beautiful where I'll have to purchase the books and all that. And yes, you guys, that is what we're going to be doing. I will be creating a planning schedule, a booklet, all of that. I will be sharing. Look, this is new for me, but I will be sharing all of that. Um, I will be also having my husband um, involved in teaching the science part because that's what he does. Science and chemistry, of course, I'll have my husband teach that. We're not ready for chemistry. Chemistry is later on. But my husband, will, my husband will be responsible for anything science, okay? And so this is a team effort, you know? And 
This is not to say that we won't consider putting JB back in a charter school or even public school later on, but as things are going right now, right now, it's to no. know. So y'all pray for me that I'll get this together. Hold on, baby. And I'm going to be purchasing some more How book. Can I get a train table too? Yes, and I'm going to be purchasing some more bookcases from Ikea to get everything organized because at this point, by the time I'm done getting everything from homeschooling, <laughs> I'm going to have at least 200 books. Of all, you know, that's personal stuff, you know, <laughs> fiction and nonfiction. So I, I need to get organized. I'm getting a homeschooling cart, another one. I already have two, but that's mostly for storing the um everything. And of course, I'm purchasing a printer. And yeah, we're excited. So let me, let's ask this one. So how are you, what do you think about homeschooling? <laughs> what do you think about homeschooling? What are you most excited to learn? Mm, history. History. So and technology. Technology. So ours will, our, whatever curriculum we decide to go with, whether or not it be, we will definitely, I think. Your butterflies are falling. Okay, I will more than likely you will start with the time for learning, but we will supplement with um, uh, our own history and technology base. So we will be we will be starting with African Can history I sit first. In my chair? Yeah, hold on, baby. We will be starting with African history first, and then slowly transitioning. Basically, world history okay. started in Africa. Okay. Are you trying to lift me up, y'all? All right, baby. Let's say bye to them. Okay. Bye. Let's smile. Let's do a thumbnail. Bye, you guys. Say bye, Tunka. Bye.